So we're talking about the comptroller's race, and we have a candidate with us by the name of Senator Brian Benjamin. The question today is, who is Brian Benjamin? Well, thank you so much, uh, Pastor. This is it's amazing to be here and be in your space. Thank you for taking the time to focus on this race because, quite frankly, it's not getting the attention that it deserves given how important it is. You know, the Comptroller manages over $250 billion of pension assets for retirees, those are municipal retirees, and you're talking about teachers, firefighters, police officers, everyday working people. The Comptroller has to manage that money to ensure that they not only get their, their defined benefit programs, my parents are two of those retirees. My mother's from Guyana, mm -hmm. my dad's from Jamaica, both union members. They, they need that pension to work, but also that pension can also be used to generate so much public benefit, right? Build more affordable housing, home ownership, uh, help us deal with the homelessness crisis, help invest in our small business and our community. So much untapped potential right there in that, with that $250 billion. Secondly, the Comptroller is also has the power to audit uh, any city agency, any uh, 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 city expenditure. The Comptroller can have audits that really look into how are our taxpayer dollars being spent? How is the government uh, uh, being managed? Is it being efficiently handled? The Comptroller can play that role. And the Comptroller also has the power to register contracts, right? So every contract with every, that every city agency puts out with third party vendors, the Comptroller has to register those contracts and pay them out. So if you have concerns about should we be, are we doing as much as we need to do on minority women owned businesses? This is the place where you can uh, have that kind of fight. Very important stuff. It's a very big job, and that's what I'm running for. So I have okay, the experience now, for it. You've educated us okay. about you know, the Comptroller's office. Correct. I need you to educate us on who are you. That's a good question. So, you know, I'm a son of, of two Caribbean immigrants. My mom is from Guyana, my dad's from Jamaica. They came here with two suitcases in the dream and believed education could be the key for their children. And I was fortunate enough uh, to, I actually used to live in Star City, uh, spent my formative years in Star City. I was born in Harlem, uh, spent my formative years in Star City, was able to go off to Catholic school from K to 12. Brown University for my undergrad, Harvard Business School for my business degree, and spent a number of years doing a couple important things. One was I actually used to manage money at Morgan Stanley, and you know I was, I was doing that job, and Barack Obama ran for president. <laughs> mm. And I just said, you know what, I, I want to get more into public service. It was always in my heart, but I, but I felt like I had to make pay the bills. I had a lot of school debt, and I felt like I needed to do that. And when Obama ran, I just kind of said, you know what, I'm going to dedicate my life to public service. Left Morgan Stanley, started building affordable housing in, in Harlem, working with a partner of mine in a minority-owned business, and you know, got involved in a community board rose to become chair of the community board, and it was just act, an active citizen and really enjoyed it until 2017 when there was an opening for the state senate seat and I was able to run for the state senate seat and mm -hmm. I am now the New York state senator representing Harlem, where I've been focusing on ending mass incarceration as we know it and helping to grow our small businesses and our minority-owned businesses that had not gotten their fair share of opportunities. And so, uh, you know, it's been a crazy life because I've, 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 I've seen so much, but I've enjoyed it. And, you know, that has all culminated into me running for New York City Comptroller because I have the finance background mm -hmm. in the public sector, in the private sector, on the community level. I'm the chair of the Budget and Revenue Committee in the state Senate where I help to oversee the state budget. Hmm. So when you're talking about, by the way, just so you're clear, the city is broke and the state is broke. We're dead broke. The re only reason why you haven't felt it as much is because uh, when Biden came in and we took control of the Senate, they came in with 15 to 20 billion dollars of rescue money, which right. we have used to, to to patch up some of the issues. But here's the here's the problem: what happens next year? Right. What happens the year after that? We got a five billion dollar city budget gap next year, to, next the year after that, and the year after that. How are we going to deal with that? I passed a rainy day fund when I was in Albany to try to give the city an opportunity to put money aside for rain, for the rainy day. Right now, that's not happening. If you look at the budget that they're proposing now of $98 billion, the part 25% of the COVID money that should be going towards restimulating the economy is going towards long-term obligations. That means in addition to the $5 billion, we're now adding to that, and we don't have... So where's the revenue going to come from? Mm. It, either it'll come from your property taxes, that's the only thing the city can touch, or we're going to have to beg the Albany, or we're going to have to go back to the federal government. We need, to, we need to have a city that is managed well, and the comptroller as the chief fiscal officer and chief accountability officer needs to play an active role in managing and paying attention to 
all the dollars and making sure it all makes sense and everything is lined up. Chief Accountability Officer. So one of the things we believe as Metro IEF, East Brooklyn Congregation, St. Paul Community Baptist Church is accountability. And we've been trying to hold NYCHA accountable for decades. We believe that there's a capacity issue. NYCHA has not done well by our people. And we have depended upon the Comptroller's Office to provide audits so that we could be informed and do our work as advocates and leaders in this city. Would you continue that legacy of doing the audits that are necessary to hold NYCHA and other institutions accountable? Without question. And one of the things I want to, want to, want to add to that is, you know, we have been fighting. I have the most NYCHA of any senator in the state, right? I have a significant amount of NYCHA. I have Central Harlem, East Harlem, the most NYCHA. And one of the things that I am, am very focused on is we're now advocating for $80 billion from the federal government, yes, right? Absolutely. Pushing on Schumer, and Schumer's working hard. $80 billion where we can get somewhere between 30 and 40. The question is, how is that 30 to 40, if it comes here, how is it going to be spent? Is it going to be spent efficiently? Are we going to make sure that we are investing in the, dealing with the right problems at the right time? Uh, are we going to waste some of that money? We, do, we are not able, we do not have the luxury to waste money. It's just we can't do it. We have to be efficient. It has to be tight. And so one of the things what I would do, not only including uh, continuing the audits, is also audit everything COVID-related. All the, <laughs> every, the, the new money coming in is so important, and I want to provide hmm. transparency. I want to sit down with you and say, here's where the money is going. Here's how it's going to get spent, and here's the timetable. Because a lot of times, you know, I know with the community renewal schools, I don't know how active you, um, you obtain on that, but we had a number of public schools that when Mayor de Blasio came in said, listen, we're going to turn Community, those schools yes. around. We're going to turn those schools around. We're going to invest in them. And a school that was so near and dear to my heart, Wadley High School, which is right near, right near my house, always has been a fight about keeping Wadley open. And, and, it, was, and it was so much a desire to do that. The money came in. It became a community renewal school. Money came in, but then it was misspent. They didn't, instead of hiring a math tutor, which is what the school needed because the kids' math scores were high, a principal was hired who was a friend of someone else. It was just a bad situation. And so we ended up, even after making a community renewal school, two years later, the mayor calls me and says, oh, we need, to close, we, need to shut, we need to truncate the school. How do we need to truncate the school? We just found the, we just got the money. Bad spending. So what we have to do is not only get the money allocated, we got to get that $40 billion here, and that's what we're fighting for, but we have to be very diligent on how it's being spent. That's the Comptroller's job. You know, um, just want to get your take on this. So Metro IEF, EBC, we've been talking about in our affiliates, we've been talking about something akin to the school construction authority. We need to make sure, as you're talking about, that dollars are well spent. We know NYCHA, as it is, does not have the capacity. We think we need some oversight professionals that will ensure the redevelopment and the building and the repair of NYCHA from top to bottom and not waste one single dime. How do you feel about that? I feel very strongly about that. And, but here's the thing. It's important that we make sure, if that's the controller's office looking in, does, NYCHA doesn't have the right staff. Where is the right staff? Because let me tell you something. I used to do this, right? I used to, I worked, I was a partner in a minority-owned firm where we rehabbed our biggest project that, while I was there, 28 buildings, 358 units. Let me tell you something. Overseeing construction, the architects, the engineers, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the lawyers, uh, the entire process of, of redevelopment, it's a lot of work. A lot of people, hundreds of people on staff, and there's always going to be delays, but how do you know what the timing is, how things are being tracked. Are you, are you investing in the right thing? And sometimes, you know, you, you, you got to hire the right contractor. So right. all of that is, again, we need talented people who are in the oversight business, right? There is a lot of money that's, that's going to be spent. We've got billions upon billions of dollars that are coming from the, from the federal government. Thank God we do, because uh, the, uh, the alternative would have been a would have been disaster. But privatization. So that, this, how we avoid privatization is through the appropriate spending of public dollars. That's how you avoid it. Okay, so I want to move the conversation a little bit to affordable, affordable housing. Um, there's conversations right now about the pension funds, right. of which if you are the comptroller, you will have oversight of the pension funds and how those are invested. What is your position relative to utilizing those funds to jumpstart affordable housing? So I've already spoken to a number of the trustees of the different 
uh, 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 funds, because as you might be aware, the comptroller is not a sole, a sole shareholder, right? Not a sole trustee. Correct. The comptroller has to convince the board. You, 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 know, you run the Bureau of Asset Management. You have a chief investment officer. You have to convince the boards to make these decisions. I've spoken to all of them, quite frankly, and there are, there's a lot of appetite to invest more in affordable housing. I think the key piece to this, though, is we need to be partnered with a mayor who's going to have a strategic plan for a comprehensive plan for affordable housing throughout the city. We need at least 500,000 more units of affordable housing, at least. And then we also have to think about the different income levels, because affordable to who is a very important concern. Absolutely. So we need to make sure we build affordable housing to different levels, but it, we can't do it alone. You need the mayor because there are certain neighborhoods that, that do not want to be a part of the affordable housing issue. They want that to be, they want to keep their, <laughs> their communities the way they are. We have to have a comprehensive plan. But if the mayor, we have the right mayor, comprehensive plan, we will invest and I will invest big to, for us so we can turbocharge that issue. It's good returns. I used to do it in the private sector. You can have, you know, more than 7% returns building affordable housing and solve a big problem. Listen, this has been a delight talking with you. If you emerge as the candidate for the Democratic Party, you win, you're the next comptroller, will you meet with Metro IAF that we might be able to partner and get some work done, Bravo? I will meet with Metro IAF whether I win or lose because this is too important. I have a background in affordable housing. I care about the work you're doing. You're doing some amazing work, and I want to be your partner, win or lose. If I win, I'll be here. If I lose, I'll be here. Senator, that's your camera. Tell the St. Paul Nation why you want to be the next comptroller for New York City. St. Paul Nation, it is a pleasure to be here. My name is Senator Brian Benjamin. I am a candidate for New York City Comptroller. I believe that there needs to be equity and fairness in how every dollar is being spent. We spent a lot of time last year after George Floyd talking about Black Lives Matter. Well, I believe Black Economics Matter, and the Comptroller is responsible for $250 billion of pension fund money. That money needs to be invested in our community. And also, the city budget, $98 billion budget, billions of dollars of contracts. That money is not being invested fairly and broadly, and, and we need to make sure that happens. So I will do that as your next Comptroller, and I will also audit the NYPD because we need to reimagine public safety in New York City and make sure that the police are keeping us safe and not brutalizing our young people. We can do all that together, and I hope you will consider me uh, as, you, as you look to vote over the next couple of days heading into June 22nd. Thank you. Senator, thank you for being here, and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. To the St. Paul Nation, I can't tell you who to vote for, but I can tell you vote like your life depends on it because it does. Blessings, everyone. Go to the polls.